If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently, for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to another video. My name is Deb and I am a faith-based content creator here on YouTube. And my goal is just to encourage you and hopefully strengthen you in your walk with Christ. So if you're interested in this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. As you already have seen by the title of today's video, I will be speaking on the waiting seasons and how God uses them to build us up. Now, I know waiting sucks, trust me. I despise waiting in line for my Starbucks morning coffee or pumping gas behind a line of cars. Waiting can sometimes be dreadful. And now these are daily practical things that we may be waiting for. But how about the big things like waiting for a spouse, waiting for a loved one to come to Christ, waiting for a child, waiting for that big career move or that promotion. Now that's hard. Those are the bigger issues of life, the bigger things that most of us wait on. And none of this is ever easy. Throughout my own life, I have observed that it consists of waiting. It is the reality. We have to wait for these things. And we have to know how our hearts should be during these seasons of waiting. However, I love to see how God uses our waiting seasons for our good. Nothing is ever wasted. So today I just want to encourage you and highlight four points on how God uses our waiting seasons. Number one, the waiting season allows you to place your faith in God instead of what you're hoping for. Psalms 33, 20 verses 20 to 22 says, Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Psalmist here identifies that God will help us through it. God is not going to leave us to, you know, muster up our own strength and rely on our own selves to get us through this waiting season. He walks through it with us. He is our shield, our protector. And when we trust in the Lord, our hearts will be glad because we know who we're putting our trust in. And God is faithful, friends. Putting your faith in anyone or anything else but God can and will disappoint you. Putting your faith in your boss, in your pastor, in your children, in your friends, in your parents, in your family will lead you to disappointment because we are all flawed human beings and we cannot meet the needs completely of everyone in our lives. This will show you that nobody can do what only God can do. Number two, the waiting season strengthens our spirit. We are triune beings, meaning we have a body, a soul, and a spirit. The soul and the spirit are immaterial, meaning we cannot see it, we cannot touch it. And our bodies is the tent, it is the home of our soul and spirit. When we live through what the Bible calls our flesh, it usually refers to our sinful nature and sinful desires. Galatians 5, 19-21 describes what our sinful nature produces. Some of the examples are sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, and so much more. But in the next verse, it shows us what the fruit of the Spirit produces, and that is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So when we are waiting on God, we are intentionally crucifying our flesh. And that's if we're doing it the right way. Because how many of you know that 
the the way in which we wait, our attitude, our heart posture during this waiting season is equally as important. If we're constantly complaining about our circumstances, constantly seeing the negative side of our waiting season, that will actually drain us and drain the people around us. Nobody likes to be around a person that is always complaining. But the good thing is we can take our frustrations to God through prayer. And number three, the waiting season teaches you not to rely on your own understanding. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, one of my favorite verses says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. We might think we know what's best for us. Trust me, I've been there. I've been in situations and I've had desires where I thought it would be beneficial to my life. But at the end of it, I realized it wasn't. It was actually a terrible decision. And I had to face the consequences of those decisions. But here it says not to trust in your own understanding. As human beings, we tend to, to believe what we see. If we don't see our desires lining up with our circumstances, we may become discouraged. And it is a natural feeling, a natural thing to happen to us when we don't see what we want. But as Christians, we should live by faith and not by sight. When we focus on the eternal, when we focus on the unseen, then our hearts are lifted because we know that there is a God working on our behalf. If we only focus on what we see, we are only focusing on what's temporary. So when we wait on God in this waiting season, wherever you may be, it is actually humbling you to surrender those desires to God. And who better than to give those desires to than God, the God who created the universe, the God who created you and I, the God who has a good plan for our lives. He is faithful and he will complete what he began in you. May we heed to the words of Paul in Romans 15, 13, where it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. As we trust in God, we will not only be filled with hope, but we will be overflowing with hope. That's what makes us different in this world. We do not just go by temporary pleasures, but we have an eternal hope. We have a rock that is a firm foundation that we can stand upon. You see, the world gets discouraged and they have no hope. You see a lot of hopelessness in the world. When things aren't going their way, when things look chaotic, when things look messy, when we are outside of God, our natural state of being will result to hopelessness. But as Christians, we have an eternal hope. We have this hope living inside of us, bursting inside of us. And so what do we do with it? Are we just going to hide that hope? Are we just going to keep it hidden? Are we just going to not acknowledge that it's there? No, friends, during this waiting season, let your hope arise. Let your faith arise. You can't have hope if it's something that you already have. Hope is something in the future. We serve Alpha and Omega. He knows the end from the beginning. So if we take on that mind, if we see ourselves as eternal beings, if we see ourselves as transcendent, we can look at this waiting season and already speak in the future. We can say, we have already overcome this. This will change our perspective. This will change our heart to know that this is already done. And so I can live with hope. I can overflow with this hope that Paul is speaking about. So friends, as you are in this waiting season, and so am I, I'm here with you. I can empathize with you. Let us just trust in God and let our hearts be surrendered to God because God is for us. He is not against us. 
And as we go through this waiting season, let us grow. Let us find the value in every season of life. Thank you for joining me today and leave a comment below. I want to talk with you. I want to get to know you guys and I want to hear your thoughts on what you do in your waiting season. So thanks again for sticking around and I'll see you next time. Bye.